Akhenaten's grandchild is going to be none other than our friend King Tut. And he'll reign for a very short time, from 1333 to 1323 BCE. And after ruling for 10 years, dies at the age of 18. Really, he's acting as a child. We think of him as a child pharaoh. Really, he would have had almost no power. There would have been a regent uh, looking after the kingdom in his stead until the very end of his reign. And his tomb is not the most luxurious, but in 1922, it's the only pharaoh's tomb that we find that is not looted. And that's what really makes it famous. So let's take a look. This is in the Valley of the Kings, and here we have a tomb uh, carved into the stone where we have the antechamber and annex, the coffin chamber with its many sarcophagi. Uh, you see the different layers. Some are stone, some are fabric, uh, and then we have the treasury there. And all of these items are things that it's felt he might need in the afterlife. Chariots, uh, treasures, furniture. Some of it is food offerings. They find honey that's still good, wine that is still good. In fact, when they open it in 1922, they can still smell the incense from the initial burial. And it's the fact that this is unlooted that makes it so famous, not that Tut was a particularly important pharaoh. And even then, when it's found, what makes it famous are the newspaper articles ab about it and then the museum tours that come out of it, not his status as a pharaoh. Tut almost becomes irrelevant here. So we're going to look at a couple of pieces. We have the death mask of Tutankhamun and the innermost coffin of Tutankhamun. So Tutankhamun's mummy, uh, who's, there's a joke there. Anyway, Tutankhamun's mummy would have worn a death mask, which is what we're seeing on the left. And that's made of gold and then precious stones. So we see lapis, we see turquoise, we see garnets. He's got the vulture and the cobra, which are symbols of the pharaoh. And he's got a beard. Now, any 18-year-old boy would have a shaggy, funky-looking beard because that's what adolescent boys have. But he has this beautifully braided beard. This is actually a prosthesis, a prosthetic uh, something that all the pharaohs, including Hatshepsut, back earlier, were wearing. You'll notice in his ears, there are actually holes cut out in the lobes of his ears. That's so that he could have worn jewelry on this death mask. And the purpose of the death mask is to idealize his form. Now, this is not what he would have looked like. He would have been pockmarked. He would have... Uh, had sort of awkward features like we all do when we're 18. And he's been idealized so that he's in a more perfect form that is going to have people look well upon him. Now, this would have sat on the mummy inside of the innermost coffin, which we see on the right. Uh, the innermost coffin is made of beaten gold. There's a wood framework in there. And we see that he's holding a couple of things. The, the mask and the death mask portion we've kind of covered already. And the eyes of the death mask would have shown through this coffin. And here he's got the crook, uh, which is this piece here, and the flail. Uh, the crook to show that he's a shepherd of his people. Uh, it's a big hook like you would use as a shepherd. And the flail tells us that he's a fan of Fifty Shades of Grey. Or that he's capable of bringing great punishment in the form of military victories, that sort of thing. There's a lot of symbols on the innermost coffin. Those are to assist him in the afterlife. Uh, spells and things that will get him through some of the trials and tribulations that he'll come across. And again, that face is idealized, and it's moving more and more from the death mask to the coffin, 
we see it moving more towards a generalization of kind of what he might have looked like, but it's probably more of a general Egyptian appearance rather than anything else. And this would have been inside of a stone sarcophagus, which would have been inside of another stone sarcophagus. And then we have canvas sarcophagi. Uh, it becomes this giant Russian nesting doll. Then we have the painted chest. Now this is found in the tomb. And this painted chest depicts King Tut as a warrior. Although in fact, he would have been far too young to actually take, take part in any military victories that might have happened during that time. But we see him on his chariot with a bow massacring his enemies. Really, this is idealization again. It wouldn't have happened. Tut does die from a broken leg that he takes by riding on a chariot as he's training in a chariot, but you would never put an 18-year-old in charge of a major military. This is just asking for trouble. Inside of the chest, we will see scrolls, and those scrolls are a collection of spells and prayers associated with the cult of Osiris which would help the dead pass the test that they need to to move on to the afterlife. So it's like some kind of video game where his soul would have to go to this chest, look in it, look at the scrolls, and take those into the afterlife so that he can get through the trials and tribulations that he'll find there as he moves into uh, his role as Osiris. <laughs> 